Hello everyone, this is Hoda Ganji. In this video, I'm going to talk about the panels in a curtain system. In the last video, we talked about the mullions. You see that this 3D view is locked. I locked it through here. I'm going to go to a different 3D view so I can rotate around, close this one, and the locked views, of course, go here. So anyway, I want to draw a new wall. And uh, I want to go with maybe exterior glazing. Uh, well, I can tell you the difference between these three. There is curtain wall, there is exterior glazing, and there is, of course, the storefront. So the storefront has mullions inside on the grids. This one, the exterior glazing, has grid lines, and this first one has no grids or anything, right? So this time, I want to go with something like the one in the middle, which has no mullions but it has grids so i'm gonna delete this go to wall i'm gonna go with exterior glazing maybe i can go to my level just uh, go to wall again and i'm gonna draw it around here okay so let's take a look i want to make sure this is connected to level two and uh, if I change the height here, let's say 4.2, this is going to change. I don't want to have that horizontal grid maybe. So again, I want to select this, edit type, I want to duplicate it, and uh, maybe I can name it as modular uh, wall. Okay. Uh, so for that grid, which is a horizontal one, I want to go with known. Okay. It's going to delete the grid line, yes. And this time what I want to do, I can type TL. So it's going to switch from thick lines to thin lines. Uh, I want to actually define my own panels and assign it here. Okay, so how do we do so? You see that this panel, uh, we can select it, we can change it, we have some options. We can assign walls here. Like if I go to walls, any of them can be a panel, but I'm going to go with some design of my own. So how about I go to new, we're going to go to families, metric, curtain wall panel. So I'm going to go with this one, open one. Yeah, it's metric, so the units are in millimeters, which is fine. I want to maybe save this file as my modular panel. I want to go with only one backup, OK, and OK. So now the panel, whatever I create here, when I assign it, it's going to be replaced with the panel over there. So let's say maybe we have a U-shaped form here. I want to go with reference plane, RP, or it's under create here, reference plane. And I want to offset this line by, let's say, 400 millimeters. Going from here to here. Now, let's say if I go to create, I want to go with extrusion. And I want to draw some lines here, here. right? And let's say I want to offset this by 30 millimeters. So on this side, that side, that side, and I want to close the ends. And I want to make sure that this is trimmed here and here. OK, here. Uh, so we are good in plan. Make sure to check one of the elevations. We have to move this up and we have to lock it here. Let me show you why first. So now if I uh, load this into project, if I select one of these items, if it's locked, you need to unlock it. Uh, actually, I see that it's in a separate panel named as modular panel. When I select it, it's going to uh, create or replace that U-shaped panel with what I have here. But it doesn't go all the way to the top, to where the level ends. So I need to go to the exterior view in the family, move this up, and when it gets to the level, to the second reference line, it's going to stop, and you need to lock it. 
Now if I load into project, replace it, so override the existing yes, go to 3D, you see that it's uh, actually going all the way over there. So now if we change the height or something of the level, let's say if I change this back to 3.6, uh, this is also going to move accordingly. Now if I want to uh, have all these as U panels, I can go to edit type and actually change the panel, curtain panel, to modular panel. This is the one that we created. Apply. OK. Now all of them are going to change. Now this time I want to show you something. First, I want to show you that how we can assign some parameters so the user in the Revit file, not in the family, has some control over like the depth of the U panel or the thickness. So if I go to the family, we are going to define a parameter for the depth of the U panel. How do we do so? First we get a dimension DI, or you can go to annotate, get the line dimension. The shortcut is DI from let's get from here to here. I'm going to lock it, which means that this reference plane is always going to be locked to this one, right? And I want to click once on the dimension, go to parameters, and I want to name it as uh, panel depth. Okay, I'm going to say okay, uh, and we locked it already. Now, if I uh, check this, I go to the family types. Uh, panel depth is added here. If I change it to 300, let's see if it updates. Yes, it does. If you go with 500, it also updates and so on. And you noticed that uh, this parameter, if I go to edit, it was defined as type parameter. So I want to show you the difference between type and instance. I want to leave it on type for now. I want to say OK and OK here. This is all good. I want to load this into project. Overwrite yes. OK. Now if I hit tab to select one of the panels, right? If I go to edit type, what you see here is that in the type properties, we have a parameter named panel depth, which is the one that we assigned. So if I change this to, let's say, 0.4, it's going to increase the depth. So now we are giving some control to the user. And you notice that this parameter, panel depth, is added in the type properties, which means that I don't see it in the menu here. I need to go to edit type because it's of a type properties to be able to modify it. Okay. If in the family I had, if I click here, go to edit, you need to click once to be able to edit. If I had assigned this as instance, see what happened. Okay. Load into project. Overwrite existing, hit tab. You see that it's now added right here. The difference is uh, if you want, let's say, um, all of them to be of a type, it's better to have it in the edit type so you don't have to change them one by one. But if you want to give the user a variety to choose it and uh, assign the depths from here, like uh, they can assign 0 0.2 to one, uh, 0 0.3 to the other one, 0 0.7, one meter to another one. If you want to uh, give the user that kind of uh, flexibility, you can put this as an instance. But actually, I prefer it as type. In this case, it makes more sense in type because this is about modular construction. So I'm going to go back here, go back to family types. Click once here, you see when it says default here, it means that uh, it's uh, an instance one. So I'm going to move it back to type, OK, OK, load into project, overwrite existing. Now you can see that if I select one of these, I need to uh, go to edit type to be able to change it. And if I change one, all three are going to change. OK, so this is a parameter for the depth. We can also define a parameter even for the thickness. 
and it might seem a little bit more tricky so I'm gonna show you how we can do that in this case we're gonna define a parameter and we're gonna use it several times so how about I go with RP right and I want to let's say offset this by uh, 40 millimeters I want to draw a line from here to here okay I want to draw one line from here to here and you can hit a space if it's on the right side and one line from here to here hit a space over there so now I need to align this to the line that we created AL click the, the reference line first and then the line this one and this one as well as this one and this one okay uh, now I want to define a parameter for the depth so di distance and I want to like this yes and I want to uh, actually define a parameter I'm gonna name it as panel thickness let's go with type okay and uh, we want to assign the same parameter here so uh, when you click on this one you don't have to create a new one but you just need to assign the same parameter here di here like click and assign thickness uh, I'm gonna save this load into project overwrite now if I uh, hit tab select one of the panels under edit type you see that we have two uh, items to change uh, we can change this uh, let's say to 0 0.06 which is six centimeters right and you see that it's gonna change accordingly over there actually this other one is not check changing only one side is changing so I'm gonna make sure that is correct let's go so uh, let's go back here what I should have done was that I should have locked this to the reference patterns right so uh, when you click on the extrusion when you move it and bring it back it will allow you to lock the item we're gonna do that on this side as well let's lock it and lock this one let's load it into project now overwrite existing now it's correct select one of the panels edit type uh, let's see what happens if I assign the thickness to actually the depth to half a meter that's good and what happens if I change the thickness let's say to five centimeters that's all good okay let's try 0.4 just once again everything looks fine okay so now no matter what depth or thickness you have for your U panels is gonna apply it here uh, so I change this to shaded and you know if you click here you can change this to a locked view I'm gonna name it as locked 2 because we already have one locked view over there now let's tag this here if I go to tag by category this is now tagging the whole wall if I hit tab it's gonna allow me to tag the curtain panel so I wanna tag this and it's telling me there is no tag loaded for curtain panel so we need to load one yes I wanna go to annotations uh, so this is rather the generic ones or the general ones I wanna go to architectural and the curtain panel tag is here so I wanna say ok now if I click here uh, I should be able to see this but I'm not so uh, if I click on the curtain panel the reason it's empty of course you can just type it here but um, the better way to do this is to select the panel and um, we need to go to edit type and that's a type mark right so I want to type it uh, consider it as U panel apply and OK right so uh, I can also modify this so it's gonna fit better how about I go with edit family here let's say I want to change this number to 15 and this one I want to change this to 25 also here 15 
and this time 25 so we have more room here and this can be moved to the center load into project to the Revit file yes and overwrite existing now it fits better maybe it's too big we can go back to edit family and make it a bit smaller how about I go with 20 and 20 here and we have to move this inside load into project and overwrite yes this is now better I can move this here so this uh, actually bent here is okay okay so this is a U panel uh, of course if I had a different panel here uh, I could have assigned a different type mark to that so basically in the annotate when you tag by category uh, it's always the same that the thing which is read here is coming from type mark okay uh, so the type mark of these three are the same so if I go to tag by category hit tap here it's gonna uh, again give me the same type mark and hit tab here oh, tag by category hit tab and this one right so now it's giving me the same tag because it goes by the uh, type mark if I want to go with U1, U2, U3 because each of them is different what I need to do is that I need to select this one by one I need to assign U1 here hit tab assign U2 to the mark and assign U3 to the mark here not type mark so now you see all three of these have the same type mark but they have different mark now let's say maybe instead of the type mark you want to show the mark so it's going to be u1 u2 u3 in that case you need to go to edit family you need to click on the text here go to edit uh, you can select mark send it to that other side and type mark send it to the other side okay load it into project okay now you're gonna see that it's gonna go with U1, U2, U3. Uh, you can go uh, however you want. Let's say if I go here, if I wanna make it a little bit more interesting, I can send the type mark over there too. Maybe I can move type mark up. And I wanna say that we're gonna show both. Let's see what happens if I say okay. Now it's gonna be in two lines, load into project overwrite so it's going to be U panel at the top U2 at the bottom the first one is the type mark the second one is the mark so you can uh, differentiate between U1, U2, U3 and at the same time you know that they are the same type mark right just one last thing if I go to edit family here and if I select this text go to edit uh, you can go with different suffix like if I put this okay load into project it's gonna actually put uh, that mark over there in between right uh, we'll discuss more parameters in the next videos